All right, hello everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do week three here. Um, this week I wanted to talk about um, basically working with uh, creative teams to uh, create marketing communications projects. Um, and so let me go ahead and share um, here. So uh, as we go into um, uh, Blackboard here, under learning plans, I have week three set in blue. Uh, so once you click on that, you're going to be able to see the lecture content we're going to talk about today and the next project here. Um, so uh, basically under lecture content here, I have um, a creative brief document. So a creative brief document is basically a document um, that a lot of agencies um, have to um, manage creative projects, but um, every single agency has a different one because every single agency essentially has like a different um, uh, creative team um, dynamic that they work with. Um, so in the past for me, I was mostly in a creative department at um, in the print industry where is where I came up with the creative brief document that I use to manage creative projects. And that's the creative brief document that I've uploaded here and I want to share with you. Um, but it essentially what it does is it can either give a creative team um, a, a couple things that could give them um, the specs of a given piece, like a given media piece. Um, so for instance, like a brochure or a newsletter or something of that nature, it'll give the creative team like the scope and the spec of the printed piece that they're going to work on or the scope and the specs of like the website they're going to work on or mobile app. It can tell them things like number of pages on the app and, and things like that, or it, it could tell them number of pages in the document, the color type and things of that nature as far as like the inks to use or the paper types to use and things like that. Um, the creative brief could also be sort of a blank slate where you don't really necessarily have like a um, uh, uh, specific design that you want the creative team to do like as far as like the specs so you know a marketing person might not be sure if the right solution for um, the project is a brochure or some kind of printed piece or a website it might just go to the creative team and say this is our goal um, and and we would like for you to come up with um, all of those different tactics or those pieces that go into the campaign and then, so what the creative director would do is create multiple creative briefs or one creative brief of the multiple tactics for the campaign. So that would be like a creative brief for a marketing campaign. So I've done creative briefs for marketing campaigns. So for instance, it would be the um, uh, register um, register people for a sales conference or a, a creative brief. And so that would con contain multiple components in that creative brief um uh, of brochures emails and things like that and, and a bunch of different things even signage and things like that and so the d document could get very large and complex um but i want to show you the example which is just more of a simple example that i have here so um on the uh uh in our learning plan um you'll be able to download this creative brief template here and this is just a blank document of the creative brief uh, so I will actually let me adjust my volume just to make sure it's not too loud. Uh, so I'll open this up and show you, give you kind of a rough, rough outline here of what this thing is about. OK, here we go. Uh, so um, for this creative brief, again, this is the sort of a living document. You can use it uh, for any future things um, that you might do. I did not force anybody in the organization to use this document. This is just something that I created to which um, if someone uh, um, on the press side that was uh, running the job needed to know what the size and the specs and the paper types and all of these other things and who the client is for the project, um, I they would be able to ask me and I could get this document and then pull it right up. I just had a pile of these creative briefs in an envelope, job envelopes next to me at my desk and if anyone had a question about it, I just flip through, pull it out, look at it, answer their question and then move on. Um, I would otherwise sometimes even make copies of these documents and then share them with press production people or other people on the team if they um, wanted to know the full specs of the projects and things like that. So this is not necessarily a document that I would force anyone to use or fill out. 
I would just take it upon myself to use and fill this out to make my life a lot easier to save up brain space for other things that I need to be thinking about as far as future projects or coming up with other ideas and things like that. So essentially what I have here is this Word document. You can double click in the header and upload like a logo or something of that nature and then reuse this thing, which is what I do when I go from organization to organization. Here, my current role uh, doesn't really um, require me to have a creative brief anymore because um, we work in a different style. So um, we have a project management system that we use at MidState. Um, so they made a, a really great investment into project uh, uh, management systems here. And um, it gives you all of the details of a project uh, uh, virtually in a website. So um, there's really no need for a creative brief document here at this point in my current position. However, in previous positions and other places that you might you know, find you work at, the creative department doesn't necessarily have like the budget to invest in a project management system specific for the creative department to which um, was the case when I first started in my career in the print industry, and, and that's why I created this. So um, long story short here, you'll of course have the date, and every everywhere I have little carrots here, these little carrots on one end and the other, that's kind of a fill in the blank area. So it's like a variable area in the document that um, gets you know uh, deleted and then replaced with whatever I have as a guide here to tell you what belongs there. So next category is job number. So we always started the job number with the year and the first two digits, and then we had a, a job number 001, 002, 003 um, in the next in the next area, and it was per client. So each client mm -hmm. had a 2022 one, 2022 two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, so that's how the job numbers were named in that organization. But um, typically, you'll have a job number for everything. Um, uh, first name, last name, title of the client contact and the and the contact information. So it's important to make sure you have like one person on the other end that you are passing this document off to as far as the design revisions. Um, now you you might not be doing the design revisions yourself um, and then they on the other end won't you know might not be doing all the the edits and providing those edits back to you themselves. They would probably have a team that they're doing, but essentially there's two voices on either end contacting each other and then the voice on the client end is the one that you want to put in this area here so if there's any questions that person is the contact person again you'll have like a creative team that you're managing all these changes with and confirming that the changes are accurate and then you're passing that along to the client um, and, and so the reason why there would be one person managing this project specifically you in a marketing communications role is that you would be um, you would be managing multiple projects and you probably have multiple creative teams working on different aspects of something at the same time. So your primary responsibility would not be to design the stuff specifically in this role. You would be um, just basically communicating and making sure the accuracy of the things are, are good and then you pass them forward. This would be very similar to my role when I was a communications manager at the nonprofit organization that I worked at for two years where I was not touching the artwork at all, but I was just very simply communicating the changes to the artists and then they were giving me that content. And I will show you how I performed that role without actually touching a computer program um, uh, beyond Adobe Acrobat. Um, which in that case, I, in that situation, I didn't really have access to that. We were not allowed as far as communication managers was concerned to use any of the um, any of the creative programs and the reason being was the way that that company was set up was um, that they had a creative team that worked for multiple uh, nonprofit organizations within the umbrella organization and so they sort of build hours to the nonprofit uh, that I was representative of um, uh, to make money off of their creative work so they um, so essentially me being on the client side um, I was not uh, enabled to touch that creative work because if I did, it would not be billable to the clients and they wouldn't make money. So that's kind of that's kind of was, was the dynamic of that um, environment. Um, again, I kind of talked about different industries and how they work in different ways. And this was one of those things that I learned along the way. 
um, which was helpful in, in jumping around industry to industry. And I kind of learned that. So, and it built up a skill like this. So I'll be able to uh, share that with you guys. Um, okay, so next category is prepared by, and so this would be you um, or, or I, um, first name, last name, title, and your contact information. Project description. So um, here you would put something like um, um, a Society for Immunotherapy of Cancer, um, a business development brochure, um, project description and components. Um, so if it's a campaign, it would have multiple components. Just to say project description might say this is a campaign to uh, boost membership to the organization. The components included in this campaign will be three email blasts, one uh, postcard, uh, one um, uh, one envelope design, and then um, and then. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, event graphics or or digital graphics on a website or things of that nature. And so that's kind of what you would put in the description. Um, any budget limitations too? So um, on the left column here, there's a little bit of a guide um, as well as to what might go into this um, box too on the right. Uh, so detailed description of the project, budget limitations and project specs. Uh, so again, like if this was given to somebody that didn't know anything about the project, they'd immediately be able to see the top here, um, who the client on the other end was, uh, who prepared this, what this project is, um, and then what are some of the budget limitations and specifications of the project um, that's needed, like all right there at the very top. So if, um, if, for instance, you are sick that day and a neat change needs to happen on a project, someone could um, essentially, if you know, worse came to worse or they really absolutely had to, they could just pick this up and and hit the ground running with it if they knew how to, you know, navigate the document. Uh, so there's two uh, different uh, sections here in the creative brief. I have one is called design specs and the other one here is called uh, creative specs down and below. So under the design specs category, we have um, a couple different sizes for the design project. So we have flat size, bleed size, and then dot, and then folded size. Okay. So flat size, you know, I have a. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unshare right now to see if we can go full screen here. Okay. So. Flat size is, this is a brochure document that I designed here for posters, um, a poster series. So, um, and it's just for a fun side project. So basically, um, flat size, this is a brochure. This is a, basically your standard brochure and it's folded from an eight and a half by 11 document. So the flat size for this is eight and a half by 11. This is 11 inches and then eight and a half inches tall here. Um, so that's what you would put in the flat size area of the document. And it says in the in the side here, it says um, over here, size of document flat on, oops, excuse me. So in the document here, it says size of document flat on a sheet. So this is flat. Um, flat size. Now, um, now there's something called bleed. So the bleed size is actually the flat size, but it's actually added. Um, you add basically an eighth or a quarter of an inch to the width on either side and an eighth and a quarter of an inch to the height on either side at the top. Why is that? Because in print, you cannot print to the very edge of the paper to where it quote unquote bleeds off. So the ink, you see how the ink kind of comes, runs off of the edge of the paper. It basically looks like it's printed all the way to the edge and past the edge. Essentially what it is, is the bleed actually is the artwork goes past where the edge was. And then, and then basically the, a cutter basically cuts that extra, that extra little bit of ink off on the very edge. Um, so essentially, again, you can't print all the way to the edge of a of a piece of paper. OK, this is basically here showing that the the ink is coming off the edge of the paper. That's because there was an extra little bit of ink added on the top ends and the side ends, and that is called the bleed. And then so once that is printed on a big flat piece of paper, then the extra trim is cut off. It's about a quarter of an inch. So it's a little sliver of paper that they cut off on the side 
um, to make it look like the ink comes off on the edge. And so standard um, standard bleed size in the industry is um, between an eighth of an inch on either side of the document and a quarter of an inch in the either side of the document in width and height. So if I have an eight and a half by 11 document flat, I'm going to um, let's just say the bleed is a half. Uh, I'm sorry, a quarter inch on either side. Well, a quarter plus a quarter is a half in width. So um, eight and a half um, in height, quarter and a quarter would be nine in height, nine inches in height, and then 11 inches in width, a quarter and a quarter is 11 and a half. So it would be the bleed size would be 11 and a half inches wide um, by um, by eight by nine inches tall because that's adding a quarter inch bleed on top and a quarter inch bleed bottom quarter inch bleed left quarter inch bleed right so that's the bleed size and you do have to give that to a printer because they will take this document and then they'll get a large very large sheet of paper um, to run through the press usually it's like uh 16 by 20 sometimes sometimes they put sheets of like um 18 by 24 things like that depending on how big the press is and so what they'll do is they'll 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 duplicate the design on a flat sheet to make the most out of that paper so they might duplicate this four times to go through the press and then it'll cut it'll cut each each one down to the flat size from the bleed size okay so the bleed size is bigger than the flat size um, the way you design something like that is um, in InDesign, and um, if you take the Adobe um, uh, Visual Design course, uh, that'll that 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 uh, pro that course will basically give you all of those uh, skills to be able to um, set up the bleed size and the flat size and the design um, uh, and things like that, or the Adobe um, the Adobe's uh, uh, certification class too um or certificate and folded size so folded size is exactly what it sounds like effectively it is the flat size but it's the folded version of the flat size so you give them you give the printer three a, a couple different things you give them the flat size right you give them the flat size you give them the bleed size and then you give them the folded size, which um, I can't think of the top of my head. It's like three and a half by eight and a half. Um, so it's not the bleed size folded. It's actually the cut down flat size folded. That's what the folded size is. So between all of those different things that you give them, they'll be able to fold this down. When you give them the, um, now later on in the document, it's gonna show you um, more details, including the, um, including the scoring. So score scoring is basically like um, uh, where the areas where this folds here um, along this line between the black and yellow on both sides. Basically, there's a very blunt instrument that kind of comes down and doesn't cut through the paper, but it like makes an indent in the paper all the way from top to bottom. So then you can fold it and it doesn't have any of those like ratchet little um edges so if i was to fold this like this without scoring it the edges and you might not be able to see it but they kind of uh, let me see if you can see it very good they kind of fray it doesn't it when you score it it doesn't fray and look super bad okay um so let me keep going through here um, so color sides color sides uh, i have a zero slash zero so if this were to be uh, now, so for color, there could be documents that are one color. So that uh, one color would be like a black and white document, okay, a black and white, or it could be two color where it could be like black and then maybe like a special color, which is what I talked about last time. If you remember in the first class, we talked about like McDonald's red or something like that, McDonald's yellow. A lot of the McDonald's, you know, um, uh, printed stuff, they have two colors. Essentially, they're either, they're like red, yellow, and they might have like black text to them, but essentially they're like red and yellow. That's a two color project, okay? So that's two colors printed on the document. Um, when you get to quantities of like 10,000 or more, that level of quantities, then when 
then the number of colors becomes very important in a document because a um, it's going to make sure that the consistency is good across the board if it's only two colors that you're having to manage and make sure that they are accurate and then b you're only using like two basically buckets of ink right um, uh, for the document rather now for most projects um, from a, um, a commercial standpoint that don't use that many you know don't have that many impressions so say it's like a um a, a postcard for um uh for uh, it's like a local postcard mailer for mid-state and we're sending it to like a thousand students or potential students or high school students in the community um that's not going to be like a two color or special color project at all you're basically going to use four colors and those are cyan magenta yellow and black and we go over this in the Adobe Design class, in the Adobe Visual Design class too. And for that certificate, the Adobe Suite certificate, um, you learn about that stuff too. But essentially, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are four colors that, when mixed together, can create all of the most of the colors, not all of the colors in the color spectrum. So basically, most, everything here that was printed was using cyan, which is like a blue, magenta, which is like a pink, yellow, which is basically yellow, and then black, which is which is black. Now, if you were to zoom in super close into the, uh, you know, one of these areas here, you would see very tiny little dots. And essentially those tiny little dots, if you were to take a, micro, uh, a magnifying glass, and in, in reality, you could like take any magazine and take a magnifying glass and then look and you will see dots, you will see uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black tiny dots that are sort of like printed and overlaying on each other. And effectively what that it does is create an optical illusion of a certain color. So cyan and magenta, um, let me do an easier one, cyan and yellow, cyan and yellow dots, so cyan being the blue and the yellow dots, when they come together, when they overlap in certain areas and, and depending on how thick those um, those dots are or how saturated those dots are or how non saturated and transparent those dots are, it will create different tones of green. OK, so that's kind of how that works. Um, and so that's what color and sides means. So typically, um, if if let's just say um, this is a two sided color um, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, which is CMYK. Um, for a, a two-sided color project, it's going to be four over four. So that's four colors on one side, four colors on the other side. If it's black and white on one side and then four colors on the other side, it'll be a one over four. And then you would specify in this box black and then CMYK. You, you could just you could kind of expand on it if you wanted to here in the document. OK, so that's the that's kind of the um, 10,000 foot view there. Now, if this was a let's say it was a web project, if it was like a website, um, you wouldn't have a bleed size, of course, on a website. You wouldn't have a folded size on a website. So you would just say something like not applicable, not applicable. For color and sides, it's just going to be RGB. That's red, green, and blue. Um, so red, green, and blue, the reason why that is, is that's um, basically light. So ink color mixed together is different than lights getting mixed together to make different colors. Now, all the colors that you see on a screen in the color spectrum and all the colors in the color spectrum in nature come from red, green, and blue light. OK, and then you have those cones in your eyes that see the red and the green and the blue, and that's all natural in your eyeball that that sees the light and and make and it gets mixed together when it's reflected from a thing like a tree or a, like a leaf or a flower. Um, uh, all of that light reflection that comes back to your eye and that's why you see all the different colors is because of the light getting mixed together. So RGB. That is the screen, um, the screen colors um, for anything, anything web, OK? And anything just that's, you know, comes from light. Um, OK, so then paper type, typically here you would put the um, the thickness of the paper, um, OK? And that's uh, basically referred to by the um, by uh, a pound. So um, there's 
two couple different types of paper. There's like a text weight, and then uh, there is a cover weight, and then there's a double thick cover weight. Okay, so um, obviously the double thick cover is like a very, very thick cover paper. A uh, cover weight paper is like magazine cover, so it's a little bit flexible. Um, and then um, text weight is like the interior pages of, of, of a magazine. So if you have um, usually magazines will have a cover uh, weight paper on the outside and then the interior pages are text weight pages. Um, they could be glossy matte um, uh, or satin, which is somewhere in between glossy and matte. Um, and then the the paper weight thicknesses. So you can have an 80 pound text weight or a 40 pound text weight. A 40 pound would be a lot thinner text weight, very flexible for text and interior pages than an 80 pound text weight, which would be a little bit of a thicker. Um, so uh, usually print uh, companies will actually give you samples of the different print th uh, paper thicknesses or make recommendations. Um, so uh, a thin cover stock would be good for a brochure. So it would probably be like a 40 pound cover or 60 pound cover stock. And some people can go up to 100 or 120. But uh, I think the numbers go like 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. And then I think they can go up higher, like 150. But there's nothing like a 200 or 180, I don't believe. Um, unless it's like, I don't know, probably something really special. But you typically will go 80 or 100, 80 pound or 100 pound text, 80 pound or 100 pound cover, and then a double thick cover. That's typically where you go with the thickness of the papers. And then there's like paper types too. So there might be, um, there's different paper companies, of course, and most of them actually come from central Wisconsin. So there's like Nina paper, Appleton paper, um, I believe it's like a Wausau uh, paper. Um, and these, you know, create papers nationwide, which is pretty amazing. Um, so um, that is, uh, uh, that's where you would put here is like Nina paper, a um, hundred pound double thick cover or something of that nature right here in this paper area. Um, uh, let's see. And and there's other types of paper too. Paper is a huge thing. It's, it's like a big, it's a big complicated thing. Um, you know, there's different uh uh there's like papers with little filaments of like uh texture inside of them there's a uh, stipple paper which is like kind of like pucker it has like little um uh, little bumps on it and stuff like that which uh some brands would use to make their printed piece um stand out a bit more or be more memorable um because um there's a whole bunch of studies about the paper and, and textures and how people can retain information just by the touch of it um, and things of that nature. So um, it's very fascinating stuff. I love paper, especially coming from the print industry. I love the just the science and the theory theories behind it. And and it's um, it's it's um, ability to enhance like the quality of the designs. Um, pages. So the pages in a document are um, uh, basically the number of sheets, if you think about it that way. So um, for a brochure, this is just one page. It's one page. It looks like it's two pages because it's front and back, or it looks like it's six pages when it folds. But when we talk about pages in print, you're only talking about sheets, essentially. So this is a one pager front and back, and it's folded. So, but it's one sheet front and back. Now, if this were like separated panels, right? If this were cut and and cut, um, you know, to three long sheets, and then that's how they wanted to print it or whatever, that would be three pages. Okay. Now, if you have like a twenty-four page booklet, uh, um, uh, in a way, a booklet is is stitched together. Um, it would basically be 24 divided by 4, which is a uh, 24. I think it's what is it? Six, six. So um, it would be six sheets because for a booklet and I'll fold this in half. Well, actually, I'll just fold this this page behind. So this is a booklet here, right? So if this is an interior page of a booklet and it's stitched and it opens up. This is one page, two page three page, four page, front and backs. Um, uh, so 
in a booklet that is stitched by the spine here, one sheet would be would equal four pages. So if it's a 24 page book, if it's had 24 flippable pages, when it's flat, it becomes one page because it's a flat sheet. So when you go design a booklet that um, is a folded booklet that's stapled in the spine, like a um, basically like a magazine, it has to be it has to be designed by in four four page uh, four page spreads. So it has to be four separate pa foldable pages. Otherwise, mathematically, it can't like stitch. It can't like be folded and bound together um, evenly unless you have blank pages at the end. OK, so t um, whatever that number is, just divide it by four and then that's how many interior pages would be in like a magazine or something like that. Um, but that's 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 more of like um, design stuff uh, for another class. But just so you guys know, um, um, when it comes to certain types of bindings, um, you have to you have to design like that traditional magazine stapled spine binding. It has to be it by very uh, increments of four. So a four pager would work, an eight pager would work, a 16 pager, a 24 pager, a 30, whatever, a 32 pager. Um, a 33 page document can't be full, uh, can't be saddle stitched, which is the stapled binding uh, without having like a blank page at the end. So, you know, if, if sometimes designers run across those things and they absolutely can't fit the amount of uh, content of material in 34 pages, then they have to come up with something creative and extra at the end. Maybe it's like a note section or something like that. Sometimes you'll find those things out there where they'll add a note section or an extra little page in there with like uh, maybe an ad or something like that. Those are good filler things to put in documents like that. So that's pages. Basically, if you think of pages, it's almost like sheets, basically. Um, OK, quantity is the number of pieces. So the number of total folded pieces, brochures in there um, that you know, pricing is dependent on that. Sometimes, um, sometimes larger quantities can end up being, um, uh, I mean, you know, um, that's important because the printer is going to then do the math and be able to stack as many of these brochures or whatever those things are on a large sheet that they can to make the most of the space and then save money in the long run. Because again, they're working off big flat sheets of paper when they print this initially. So quantity becomes important um, here. Um, die cut, um, a die cut is like, if you have like a folder or a box, those are much more complex um, shapes when they're flat. So um, sometimes there's a specific, um, uh, if you think of them as cookie cutters, that's what a die cut is. A die cut is like a, a large um, uh, imprint cut that um, basically cuts the pit, comes down and it punctures the paper and cuts it out. Um, and then that's it. This is after it's printed. So once the design is printed on the flat sheet, the die cutter is at the end of the process and it just kind of come clamps down and cuts it out of the sheet. So it can come in different shapes, but uh, basically they're just manufactured like um, uh, they're manufactured custom. Um, now, there are also things that um, uh, out there now, which is a CAD cutter. So that's basically like you can upload the art into uh, the computer. And basically, there's like a knife that comes down on a cutting table that cuts shapes out of paper. Now, um, the differences between the two is the die cutter um, can do that, but it can only do one sheet at a time uh, to cut out your special shapes and things out of the design. So it takes more time for the die cutter to go through it. So it's good for smaller print runs. Let's say like 50 or 100 of these things that you want to print and have die cut with a, with a, um, uh, with a special shape. Um, and now if you want like 500, 600, 1,000, you're going to then invest in purchasing a die that's going to be custom made, and then it will be able to clamp down um, on 
on larger amounts of projects much faster. And if you think about um, a sheet going through a press at full press speeds, that's how fast the die cut can just come down as it's going through the press. It's just bam, 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 as the art is coming out and they time it just right to where it just hits every time. So that um, uh, that's kind of the difference there. And so a lot of times there's die line numbers that um, if you call a printer and say, hey, do you have a bunch of die lines for the traditional shapes like a folder or, or something like that, um, or um, square brochures or, or rounded corners or things like that, um, printers will have those on hand because the past clients have purchased a die, they won't have the die in their office they'll just purchase it and the printer will have it in their storage and the printer will just use the die whenever the client that they want to run more copies of the the folded uh, the the folder or the envelope um, specialty envelope uh, the printer will just pick up the die from the past project and then use it again um, so like if you call a printer and, and you're like hey do you have any custom dies for printed envelopes or custom dies for um, folders they would actually give you a bunch of numbers of dies and send you the dies um, digitally so you can see the shape and everything and then pick one and then they can use it too for you so you can actually just use pre-existing dies and then you would just type that number in there because when they sent it to you you would see the number uh, that the die was so you would be able to just pop that in there and again like next time you come across another project and you're like oh you know i remember this project we did for the society for immunotherapy of cancer we did a envelope that would be perfect for this client's uh, this client's need uh, so i'll just go back to that past creative brief and pick up that die number and then copy and paste it right into here and then that's you know the printer will right away know exactly what to do you can actually pick up the old file, um, the old die line file from your archives, um, the digital version, and then send it to your creative team. And then they'll be able to just hit the ground running with the die line and everything else. So then I see how you become like a, a very key source in the whole creative process as a marketing communication manager. Um, as long as you kind of understand what all these things do and mean you'll be able to manage any kinds of these projects like that. And this is just kind of high level stuff. So it's just kind of the foundation of, of, of what this document is about and going over. Uh, binding and finishing. OK, so binding, we talked about um, uh, staple, like the uh, the staples in the back of a um, uh, magazine. So that's that's a binding. So basically what it's called is saddle stitching. And so those are the staples that you'll see in the in the spine of a magazine. Another kind of binding is perfect binding where uh, there's no staples in it, but it's basically like the cover is open and then they have put like a slime of glue here and then they stick the pages into the glue, they close it up and then it just dries and then it's uh, basically called perfect binding. So I don't have any samples like um, I could I, I don't, we're not in person so I can't show you samples but um, if you do a Google search for like um, perfect binding and saddle stitch binding you'll be able to see plenty of pictures of examples um, but for the brochure um, the only there is no binding to it but there is a finishing which is the score and then the trim, which is what I talked about earlier. So the score is where that blunt object comes down. It's like the back of a butter knife, let's just say. And it just runs down and it doesn't cut through the paper. It just runs down and scores it. And then when this goes through the folding machine, it kind of, it'll just fold like that. And then, and I think it'll go through the folding machine like this way. And there's like a little angle thing that kind of folds it as it comes through. Um, and, and it won't have that little crispy or the fraying where it folds um, in the paper and the ink. So uh, for a brochure, you would uh, you would just put here score and fold. Um, and then mailing, you could um, put mailing information to like first class uh, mailing or or any of that or just say yes or no mailing required and things like that here. Um, Let's see. OK, so under creative specs here, um, if 
the marketing person or the client has anything that they want included in the design for sure, this is where you could put in here uh, for the creative team to like um, be able to do. Otherwise, you could actually give more um, guidance to the creative team if if you want more control over the creative and and tell them what to do. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, so um, if you want to empower them more to just um, uh, uh, provide um, their thoughts on the design, then this is where you would put that. So unique selling point, the biggest quality that sets the client apart from the competition. So, um, you know, what is that unique selling point, that unique uh, sales proposition that that um, that this that you want included in the design and communicated in the design? That's where you put in there. The target audience, um, so all those demographic informations you'll put in there. So like if it's an older audience, you might want to use larger pieces of text um, uh, to adhere to um, uh, a vision that might be um, uh, not as, you know, not as um, strong as as a younger demographic. There could be colors like um, uh, the more mature type color schemes in the design you'll want than then if it's you know to like a child that might use a lot of pinks or things like that are very shocking and loud colors so you'll want to include maybe a little bit of target audience information if the brand isn't 100 percent established or if the brand is established and the printed piece um, is to look maybe a little bit different from what's traditional then you'll want to make sure that that's included here um that 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 um direction is there to help them uh, kind of understand it and be able to uh, tailor the design for that. Um, objective, this or any like um, necessary messages that need to be communicated in there. So um, uh, if you have to have a certain website uh, for the people to join or you have certain things that you want to say, certain selling points, that's where that stuff would go. It's usually be like bulleted out. Um, here supporting rationale so why should the target audience buy into the idea or required so the why which is which is pretty um important you might have like testimonials here of people that have said hey i've used this product it's been really great or things of that nature in the piece um perhaps um essential content too you could put like um, whatever websites or um uh, qr codes or links to videos or videos themselves it's a website um that needs to go into the design you put that in there schedule when is the initial client review needed so you know this is typically like one if it's like a brochure that you need like 200 or 300 copies of this one it might be a week out from when you want them to have it delivered or two weeks out this is like when the client will first have a look at it this is when the first draft is due um and then and then you could um essentially then say final due this date but you know it just depends on when the client approves it and they understand like what the turnaround is from a print standpoint too uh, so you put that schedule in there um so the creative team knows once turned it around and then includes here is like any um kind of sketches or things like that that you might provide in the document and this could be emailed but um you know, it could also be printed and attached to this creative brief. So you just have it in, you, you know, access to your information. This could all be just digitized too. It doesn't uh, need to be printed or anything. Um, I like to have the printed files like right next to me. So I'm, you know, um, so I just have it there. Um, you know, when I was doing this, I would always kind of print them out. Um, and then you could pass them around to people in that way too, which you can do that digitally anyway, but um, that's just kind of what I did. So to each their own. <clears throat> um, OK, so what I wanted to do is actually show you like a completed version of this of, of for a. Um, for what it would look like for a brochure. So. So. Um, you know, here's here's what it would be filled out. You got your date, job number, client. Um, uh, this is a let's see. Yeah, this is this is a um, creative brief for like a brochure. 
OK, now actually. Here I have some more stuff under the brochure design uh, tab on. Um, 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 our uh, Blackboard page here. Uh, I have some copy and this is what I would provide the creative department. So let me download that. I'll download the copy too. This is part of what the communications manager would provide. Um, along with the creative brief and then um, a sketch one here. This is actually this is all here. So um, let me let me just take a step back. OK, let me download this. OK. So when you go into the brochure design. Uh, section of our Blackboard page. For this week here. Under lecture content brochure design. You're going to find all these files that I'm going to go through right now. Um, just to give you a sense of like how in from theory, what it looks like from theory to practice. OK, so let me start over here. Um, yeah. All right. So here's what here's what. The team would get. So you're going to have all this information, who it's prepared by, who the client is, the brochure uh, content. And flat size uh, 11 inches by eight and a half. So the way we do the size is that it's width and height. So usually you'll say eight and a half by 11. That's because it's usually like this, which is portrait orientation and landscape. It's going to be 11 by eight and a half. So that's how they read it in the print print world is like the width and the height. So that's how that's why it's 11 and eight and a half here. 11.25 by 8.75, which is a one uh, eighth inch bleed around um, the whole document. Folded size is 3.75 in width by eight and a half in height. Color size is four over four CMYK. So two sided full color, two sided full color. Um, paper standard mat 100 pound text paper. So that's the 100 pound thickness um, text weight. So it's not too thick. It's kind of flexible and good as a brochure. Um, uh, standard mat, which means it's not glossy. It's non glossy. So it's just matte, um, which is, you know, like flat, flat color, no gloss to it or semi gloss. Um, pages, number of pages in the document is one, and we've already established that it's two sides up here in the color size section. The quantity of how many um, of these do you need is 200. Um, die cut is not applicable. It's not, not a die cut needed. And then binding finishing is trim. So trim, which is the cut, cutting all the way around, and then scoring uh, with that blunt object coming across and then folding. And these are just all the different uh, unique selling points and the information that was provided uh, to the creative team uh, to design the uh, brochure. So unique selling point, it's a comp comprehensive medical and surgical consulting services. That's just what this uh, organization does. This is the organization is called Loyal Vet. Um, Target audience is uh, farmers with large animals such as cows and horses. So it's like a large scale um, uh, vet. They don't do like necessarily dogs and cats. <clears throat> so that gives the designers, you know, a little bit more perspective. Um, objective, little vet is always open. So that's the objective of telling them, you know, what the most important message is in this brochure. Um, the supporting rationale, we service large animals and has emergency service number. Essential content is the emergency service number and the website. And then here's the schedule, which is the first draft on this date, sent to printer on this date, and then shipped to customer on that date. And then the includes um, what I would have given them are a couple things. I would have given them 
one, which is the copy for the brochure, because that's the marketing communications person, you come up with the copy. So, you know, we at MidState actually have a copy document that looks a lot like this, where um, it's the title of the piece of the project, and then you kind of, we kind of say front cover, and then we provide the copy call out, we provide that copy to inside flap, headline so we kind of like label everything the way it, we want to see it in the design um and pull quote um so that's basically like a giant quote um where the text is really big and, and it draws people in to read like more of the body uh copy content all right inside front cover so of course you got the front cover here inside flap which would be considered this part here the one that folds in okay uh inside front cover that's this part um a center panel that's of course this part the very center between the um and then here's the flap inside flap so that's that'd be this part here so this is the flap and then here's the inside flap once this thing is open and then the back cover is just this back part here, which ends up being the middle section here. Okay. Um, and then so you have all the copy here um, in the document. And then so typically this copy would be then approved by the client, like first and foremost, before they even see the design. Um, now, that's not to say the copy doesn't change uh, from from when the copy is approved by the client to when it's placed into the design, um, but it's like 90%, 85, 90% approved. Usually the copywriter or the marketing communications person and content person will actually work with the client back and forth several times to get this approved, okay? Um, you know, three, four revisions, sometimes more. <laughs> um, but once that, once that copy is approved, it's uh, placed into the design. So the communication professional would um, actually. Now, this is kind of what I did uh, back in the day. Um, I would come up with a sketch like this. So um, what I'll do is actually turn these comments off. Let me see if I can collapse all. Let me. Hmm, hide show. Not sure if I can hide these comments here. Let's see. Green alignment, show hide. Well, it doesn't look like there's an easy way to. Maybe, um, okay. Well, either way, I am, uh, I'll kind of go over this real quick. So kind of looks like a mess, but what you're going to see here, and it really looks like a mess, but what you're going to see here is a panel here. You see. So here's the panel. This is going to be the front cover. Okay. And then so um, uh, that's essentially what this is showing in the design. Now here is the back cover the center panel, and then here is the inside, the the flap. Here's the flat part. And then here is the inside flap part. And then here is the center panel, and then here is the inside cover. Okay, so basically what I would do is draw out this whole thing on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, do some, do some looking up for pictures um, online of like here, for instance, like a doctor um, or a veterinarian um, uh, using a stethoscope to a cow or things like that. And I would just draw this thing out, scan this in um, into uh, into the PDF um, here, and then I would um, then use these call out tools or these commenting tools here to actually tell the designer where things would go in the layout. So the designer will be able to look at this and then one by one, um, click on these different areas. And then over in the comments section here,
they'd be able to click and see, okay, this is gonna say loyalty veterinarian service provides comprehensive medical, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all this copy comes from the copy document that was approved between me or the communications person and the client. So, so then I would be able to, you know, go in through the design, have this drawing and then say, please use the following image. And then the, here's where I would store the image on the server that the designer could then pick up the image and then put it in the design. Okay. So here's where the area where I would put the copy. So see these like little, this little left, um, left line and then these lines that come off, it almost looks like a flag. Um, that denotes, that denotes an area of text to a designer. So that's a block of text to a designer. And then this is the text that actually goes in it. So you can actually tell the designer specifically where in the layout you want the text to go and then what text goes in there. And the designer will then work that text in according to what the sketch says. They'll up, uh, you know, they'll be able to take, you know, use the font, pick the font. They'll be able to bold things, um, uh, change the size, change the letting, which is the spacing between the lines of text in the paragraph um, and things like that. So they'll be able to fit that in for you and make it work. A box in a design that has an X in it, like you see here, this is a placeholder for an image or a headline or a, just a placeholder to block out. And then so you could say, please add logo here. So rather than drawing out the logo, you could just put a box and then put a little call out comment to say, please add logo in this case. Um, here I'm using the box with the X in it to denote this is a headline area to read testimonials. Um, so it's not really like a block of text. It kind of stands out more to the designer to tell them, um, oh, this is going to be a headline, so it's going to be bigger, it's going to be bolder, it might be a different color, there's going to be something special about this text because it's a headline, and um, it's going to say testimonials, and then underneath it, it's going to have this testimonial here. Once the designer clicks this, this markup tool, they're going to be able to see exactly what text is going to go in there. Here again, we're um, giving the designer in blue a little bit of creative direction, um, and then telling them what this is about. So this is a box that's kind of more called out. Um, you can see it's got a thicker border in the drawing. You can see that the, I will delete this really quick so you can see the, the, um, the drawing better. You can see here that as the text, um, instead of the line coming down um, it, uh, on the on the left side that denotes left alignment in the text like it does above here in this box this is left aligned well this is center aligned so you're kind of you have a line in the center and then the line the verticals or i'm sorry the horizontals that go across large and small um, denote that that is a body of text in a box that is center aligned because the line is in the center um, and and so that's kind of how a designer would look at that and say, oh, okay, that's totally center aligned. And um, you're just telling them here, please make this pull quote box read this, and then you're kind of making it making them read it, or you're giving them the content to to do that. Okay, um, this also more center aligned text, more um, direction as to what goes into that area. You got office hours, you got the contact information and um, uh, address information too. You have a picture of like a farmhouse here. Um, you're giving them direction of where to find the files on the server. Um, so basically what I would do uh, to, to give them a file on the server, I say this is on the C drive slash it's under users slash it's under this a document folder slash so you guys basically copy and paste the um uh, the folder path to where the image is on the server that you guys are sharing in the in the organization okay um again you got a picture of a horse here uh, or a cow i think it is um and so uh we have a little call out uh for for them to see that too um and where to get that here's uh here denotes some bullets so you can kind of tell that that's that's supposed to be bullets you just have the circle with the line circle line that's just what represents bullets like in a, in a rough sketch 
Um, and then so uh, here you have the text for what the bullets are going to be here. Um, and then and then so on and so forth. So that's kind of that. So I would give the designer this rough sketch with all these all these call outs. I would give them. Um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily have to give them the copy document. Um, and then I give them the creative brief. And then from there, they would know exactly how big the size is going to be, what how many colors they got to use, um, what information they need to give the printer once it's approved um, uh, by the client, and the general sense of the layout in the pictures to use. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, once that comes back from the designer, it's not going to be like 100% perfect. The marketing person might have to go back to the designer and say, you know, OK, can you please make this a little bigger, this a little smaller or change this color here, there, whatever. But it's going to be about 85 percent of the way there, which is better than um, it being like 25 percent of the way there. I got to tell you that this is this is a method, especially sketching and in providing designers, things like that um, gets you get you quicker to completion than if you don't give them anything. And so the faster you can turn things around, the more effective you're going to be in the position. All right, so that is effectively um, how. How to manage creative project um, with a creative team uh, as a marketing uh, manager. Now. You know, it's not always going to be brochures. Sometimes it's going to be direct mail pieces, postcards, or or things like that. But it's the same thing. You just kind of draw it out. And I've done so many things, drawn out so many things. I have a lot of examples, but I'll kind of hold off on sharing those till maybe another time if we if we want. If, if you know, if I get questions and stuff, just let me know. I can make another video to show you more examples of different. Um, things that I've done in the past, um, you know, with with rough sketches. But as you can tell, the rough sketches are not anything beautiful at all. But they do communicate a lot, and they uh, and and that's all they're meant to do is just communicate. They're not meant to be beautiful, attractive, or anything of that nature. Okay, so um, let me see. Let me look here. OK, loyal vet service. OK, so for, uh, what I wanted to do is go through an example of what the next assignment is going to be. So let me go through the assignment first. So project four, um, there is no real scope to this, um, but essentially. Um, what I want to show you. Let me go through the sample. So what the project is going to be is um, I'm going to give you two designs. One is the final outcome that what you want to go for and what you want your creative team to produce. And then one is what they gave you for the first draft. OK, so in our lecture content here, um, print ad, I'm going to show you here's going to be a sample. So I have two versions here. I have the final, which is the one that we want to give the client. It's the ideal and then the not final that's the first draft from the design team so let me download both of these for you we'll start out with not final first so this is a print ad sample and it's not final you can see that it's not it's not perfect, it's not great, but we don't know what perfect and great looks like, right? This is what per perfect and great would look like. So effectively, what you're going to be tasked with doing is taking a <clears throat> taking a design from its first step, which is here, and creating a set of comments using the comment tools to tell the quote unquote design team what to do to make it from not final to final. And what you'll turn in is the not final version with all of the comment markups. 
Now, so what you're going to do is actually look at both of these. And you could probably will do it side by side like this. Go ahead. There we go. So you look at it side by side and say to yourself, OK, what do I need to do to this design to get it to this design? And then so what does the creative team need to do? So first, I'm going to look at these colors, right? These colors are off. So um, this border, it's off at the top here. So what you want to and it's not the right color. It's it's orange. So you want to make it black, right? So what you'll do is go once once you open up this document, you're going to want to hit this comment bubble here in Adobe Acrobat. Once it's open, the side panel is going to come up and it's going to say no comments because you don't have comments here yet. But over here, up in the comment toolbar, up on the furthest right, you're going to see these little uh, conglomerate of shapes here with a drop down. Just hit that drop down and then click on this text call out tool. Um, now I'm going to show you how to use several tools and you can even use tools that might be a little bit you know, different than what I'm showing you, but these are the tools that I would use to communicate to uh, the designers, okay? And most of the time I'll use the comment, the uh, call out box tool, so text call out tool. Um, and then so once it's selected, you're going to see this little um, target on the uh, panel here. So I'm going to click where I want the arrow to go and I'm going to pull away. And then here in the box, you can, what's going to pop up is some of these settings here. You can change the color of the font and the size. I'm going to bring the size down by clicking this down arrow to eight. And I'll type in some text here. I'll go even further. I'll go six to make it smaller so it's not so obstruction and so much of an obstruction. And then I'm going to tell the designer, um, uh, I'm going to tell them politely too. Um, so I'm going to say, please um, make this orange box black. Um, and make it the same thinness all the way around. Okay. Um, then I'm going to take this call out tool again, and then I'm going to click this area because here, uh, obviously it's a lot thicker at the top and it needs to be thin. So I'll say, please make this the same thickness as the other three sides. Okay. I'll move this out of the way, this out of the way. Um, okay, down, of course, the logo is very, very large here in comparison to here. Uh, so I'm going to actually use the rectangle tool just to give the designer a sense of like how big we're looking to have this logo. So I'm going to say, I'm going to trace approximately how big I want the size, and I'm going to say, please make the logo about this large. Okay, this serving and supporting central Wisconsin farmers since 1972, saying serving ampersand supporting central Wisconsin farmers since 1972. So that's one thing you got, and that's one thing like these two ads, this ad exercise is going to help with is attention to detail, and that's super important for the marketing communications person. So you're going to notice here that there is we're saying and here. So the designer gave me an and, but the end result we want to have is the ampersand. So what I'm going to do is highlight and, and I'm going to click this strike through text tool. So that's going to cross this and out, add a box, and then I can just type in ampersand right here. Post. And then so when the designer hovers over that, they're going to see that I need to cross out and and then put an ampersand in there, okay? Another tool, now actually not only that, but we want the designer to move this down to this area 
of the ad. OK, right now it's up here at the top portion, so we want this whole section to move down. So uh, what I would do for something like that is again, I would use my rectangle tool. I would select it and then I would just hide like uh, surround this whole thing of copy. And then I would say, please move this down. And then not only that, because they're not going to know where down is, I'm going to take this little pencil drawing tool and then I'm going to start drawing an arrow like that. Um, I want the arrow to be like a little bit thinner. So uh, over here on the top right under line thickness, you can actually um, you can actually click these like little lines here. Once when when the um, arrow is selected, the shape is selected that you just drew and then reduce the thickness like that. So the designer will be able to see this says, please move down. There's an arrow showing them where to move it and simple as that. Um, also, we want to add a note, so I'm going to hit the sticky note here. Now this is an overall note. Um, again, you don't have this is how this is how I do like blanket statements in the design. Um, I use the sticky note, so I'll click that and then over here I'm going to say overall in the design. Remove instances of the orange color. And replace it. Replace them with the yellow color. So this tells the designer to delete the orange swatch from this whole design and to swap it out with this yellow, which is kind of an orange, but it's more yellow than orange in comparison to this orange. OK, so that's that. Um, also here between this design and that design, we have this text that's non italic and then this text, the designer made it italic. Well, if I wanted it non italic, um, I would use this other tool here, the highlighter tool. And again, you don't have to do the exact tools for the exact outcomes that I'm doing them for. These are just these are just the tools I use to communicate these different things. And this specifically um, I use to communicate to change the um, weight, the weight of the text. So if the weight of the text is bold um, and non italic that I want it to change to, I will actually highlight the text that's the wrong way. And then with my highlighter tool in this box that comes up, I'll say make this non italic and bold. Only. OK. Um, these these uh, bullets down here, we have the discoloration, which is going to be solved because I have already created an overall comment right here. Overall in the design, remove instances of the orange color and replace. So that's going to change these automatically. Um, all I really have to do is tell, first of all, um, I have to tell the designer to move these bullets over to indent a little bit here. Um, and then that's probably about it. So I'm going to uh, take this rectangular tool and surround this. And then I'm going to say, move this uh, block of bullets over a bit okay and then i'll just take my arrow and then i'll go like that so give them a little sense of you know how you know a space to go over um okay phone number font is different so um and that font is the same as this quality concrete on the farm font so I'm going to say I'm going to highlight this font. It's going to be a font change. I'm going to say change this font to match the part in the design that reads uh, quality. Oops, quality concrete on the Arm. You don't necessarily have to type all that out. You could almost just say quality concrete dot 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 and then and then they'll get it. 
<laughs> okay. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then also I could literally just kind of go back into this and then edit this, um, and then add because I want to tell them to center it and then center this text into the space. So I didn't necessarily have to draw another comment box or, or, or anything for that. I just used the same comment to tell them to move it, but then also change the font. Um, then here we have a couple arrows, so you could actually almost uh, draw some arrows like that. With your pencil tool. And then on one of the pencil tools, just say, um, uh, draw about three white arrows on the left and right sides that point towards the phone number in the middle. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I would do here is actually look at all this copy to make sure it was right. So delivery of ready mix concrete, check concrete pumping, miss, we were misspelled here, and conveyor service. So um, I'm going to take my text cross out tool, highlight the extra M, and then leave it there. Um, let's see, stone and block, it's going to then read delivery of stone and block. So I'm going to Take the tool again. And then I'm going to say delivery of stone ampersand block. Okay, I'm going to say ready mix concrete is the next one good. Material holding block good. Rebar comma fiber mesh and form stakes. So that's it. So then I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save it, put my name. And this is the not final and I'm going to save. So this is a document that I would then um, send it back to the designer. The designer will go or will open this up. They'll see all the changes and they'll be like, OK, I'm going to click on the comment area and then they're going to start at the top. Click, make this the same thickness as the three other sides. Yep. OK, and then they're going to make that change in the design and then they're going to delete the comment and then that's going to remove it from here so to make it a little bit more clear. And then they're going to click the next comment overall in the design, remove instances of orange color, replace them with yellow. They're going to make that change. They're going to swap out and then they're going to delete and then they're going to go one by one by one by one by one until they reach what you had in mind, which was this. OK, and then so that is effectively the process of going through for the assignment. Um, you're going to be practicing using the um, the commenting tools, communicating to the designer, right? The imaginary designer on the other end, all of the changes need to be made uh, to to fulfill the need of the client and then at that point you would take that you will in reality not for the assignment but in in reality you would then take that design and then send it to the client for a review the client would then probably um will send you back changes and then you would go back to the designer um with those uh with those changes to have them change those too so for the assignment um, if you go under learning plans week three, um, go to project four, print ad marketing communications. And then this assignment here is um, is going to be for a full page ad. So what you'll do is download the not the final and not final version. So again, the final version is going to look like this. version is what you want the designer to do for you. This is the end result. That's the final version. Oops. So just to clear up any confusion and stuff, 
Um, you'll download that, and then you'll download the not final version, which looks like this. It's kind of a mess. Show in the folder, open. Uh, did I try? I don't know if I downloaded that right. Okay, should get. There we go. Here's the not final version. Close these windows up. Okay. Uh, okay. So then you'll kind of break them out here. So. You'll go through like kind of what I did for that other design, but you're going to do the same thing to this design. So you're far. So here's what we want, which is on the right. And you can tell it's like the colors are not a mess. It's well branded and things like that. There's actually a logo here. So um, there's things not misspelled, things of that nature. So what we want is we want to take what the designer gave us initially here on the left and we want to bring it to a final piece here on the right. So um, to start, um, I'll use the uh, uh, rectangle tool. And then the first thing I want to do is move this up here to the top and then change it to green and then all that other stuff with no, no stroke. So I'm going to highlight it with the box and I'm going to tell the designer move this headline up towards the top. Um, and then change the color to green. Um, and then remove the brown stroke around the text. You could put all that information in one box and then I'll take the, the drawing tool. I'll make sure my size is good for thickness, um, the pencil tool, and then I'll just Kind of give them one of those. Um, you know, okay, so then I'll look, read through your farm runs 24 7 period. Well, the text here says your farm is always running. So I can click my text cross out tool, your farm, and we want to say runs 24 7. So we'll cross these out and then we'll say runs 24 7 period. And then it says, so are we, and we're going to say, so do we. So I want to take my text tool and then, and then make it say, do. Okay. Um, so there you have it. So remember, as we're looking through here, you want to make sure you're reading all this text. You want to make sure that you're telling them uh, either through your highlighting, what you want bold, unbold. Here, look, look at this stuff. There's dairy, beef, equine, and small rum, ruminants, clients. That's all bold, but it's not bold here. So you can say here, highlight that section in what they provided you. Make this text bold. So look out for these detail mistakes that are coming across here. Um, no logo, right? We have some misspellings. Uh, we have bullets uh, here in two columns rather than three columns here. How would you tell them, you know, what to do? We have this underlined score here underneath this headline. You want to make sure you tell them that. Um, this image is flipped uh, from one to the other, so you want to make sure you talk about that. Um, and so essentially that is the assignment, uh, you know, um, kind of go through this design with a fine tooth comb and uh, make all the comments um here on your not final version this not final version get the designer to the point to where they can kick back something that looks like this okay on that on that first on that first round uh, so once you make all your comments um per the assignment go ahead and do a file save as and just kind of put your name there save and then once you get that done, um, go ahead to um, uh, the project and then print add changes assignment upload here. This is where I want you guys to upload it. 
I have this due for before midnight on Tuesday, February 14th, because this demo was late for you guys. So I wanted to give you guys a couple extra days to get this one done, since you guys probably have other things you got to do for classes and life in general. So um, hopefully that helps you. Um, if you do run into any uh, problems or concerns or questions or things like that, you want me to show you um, any any of the tools again, um, I'd be happy to. So just let me know. Um, you know, when you turn it in, kind of click that, uh, upload your files here, and and uh, that should do it. So, um, all right. Uh, okay. Well, I will uh, talk to you all soon. Have a good rest of your day.